It is finally here. After so many lore accurate wins and many requests from people my stream and videos of when are you going to do lore accurate story mochi? Well, here it is. We have finally arrived at the promised land and we're starting a chapter nine. Now, now, I already know what you're thinking. Why aren't you starting a chapter zero mochi? And the answer to that is <clears throat> because the complex political narrative that HG has so masterfully written for chapter 9 and beyond has captivated my imagination. Thus, I now wish to pay my whole respects to the writing team by bringing to life the war in Londinium by using the operators that appear in the story and going through what they went through to really feel like I'm there and at the end say, maybe this really was our Ark Knights. And totally not because I thought doing the Londinium arc would be way easier to the larger amount of better characters involved. That could never be my reason. With that said, I have a fairly stacked roster with many strong units, but a concerning lack of anti-air options on my team. Low altitude hovering is truly my sworn nemesis. Well, with the intro out of the way, let's commence the journey of my first ever attempt at doing story stages in a lower accurate manner. 9-2 is our first stage of the story, and it shows us a wide stage with many block lanes and of course introduces us to the main gimmick of the story chapter, that of course being the refraction all enemies have. Jokes on them however, my team has almost no arch damage anyways, so I take this as a lucky break. With Horn on the squad, this stage becomes an AFK clear since with her skill 1, she obliterates most enemies before they ever leave her range. This will be a recurring theme throughout the entire chapter. Halfway through the stage, I start getting strong flashes of deja vu, but I'm sure this is the only time I've ever seen a stage of such complex caliber. With the deja vu gone, Horn easily sweeps the stage. 9-3 passes without any real trouble, but the chat comes to the conclusion that these stages are way too easy, and that I should be doing all this with CM conditions, and I of course accept the challenge, since I only know suffering in these challenges. This is of course something I would surely not immediately regret. I load into 9-4 and immediately regret agreeing to doing CM for this clear. The casters being invisible creates a minor problem for my team that can only invis reveal if there's a non-invisible enemy. With this awesomeness, I place Horn hoping to hit the enemies that walk by, but very bad placement timing leads to her getting blocked and the enemy leaking causing my first loss. With my first loss out of the way, I actually follow my intended plan this time by letting an enemy slip past so Horn can target them and reveal the casters. The casters on the left side are still alive, but that is a problem for a future mochi to deal with. More invisible casters spawn in, which starts to worry me since the left side is starting to stack up with the casters that future mochi has to deal with. Two more casters spawn in and shoot Kalsip dead. With six casters on the left side now, they all start to move and I curse the past version of myself, but I quickly deploy Jessica on the top side to block the two casters. I place Chen and Blaze to block the rest of the casters, and Blue Woman S2 takes down most of the group. While this was happening, Sadcap perishes to the two casters, and in a vain attempt, I place Bagpipe and Reed, who I forgot I had and probably would have kept Jessica alive, and I leak at the last moments of the stage. So I run it back in the same exact manner, but this time I deploy the old well to keep Jessica alive, and we actually clear the stage this time. 9-5 goes very smoothly, with Horn blowing everything up from a distance. 9-6 is a stage where the golden rule of EN doesn't read is proven, since I instantly lose because I didn't read the CM condition being minus one block. I am very good at this game. I load the stage up again and pass the hardest part, which is trying to remember that the CM condition is minus one block. The rest of the stage goes pretty smoothly with Horn doing almost all the work again. 9-7 is another Horn sweep stage, so nothing too interesting happens during the stage either. However, I do make my clear all the more lore accurate by having Harmony team kill Sally. Other than that, it was a pretty easy stage clear. 9-9 is another easy stage overall. This is the stage that introduces their gargoyles, and they do pose a little bit of trouble, but there are so few of them on this stage that it ends up being pretty forgettable. 9-10 is another gargoyle filled stage that is somewhat tight. Luckily, the center of the stage ends up being a very nice kill box for Horn and everyone else. I get very close to losing when a gargoyle starts to fly without having taken too much damage. A Sally S3 delays it enough that Chen is able to get her skill right before the gargoyle leaps. See guys, this just goes to show you that not all models are terrible. Another gargoyle almost escapes, but in the one time during this entire clear, Siege actually does something by pushing the already broken pillar and killing the gargoyle. With that taken care of, we clear the stage. 11 of the 9 is a stage that could have posed a problem, but luckily chapter 9 gave us the sad cat altar PNG, which makes the stage much easier. This is because the stage introduces the low altitude hovering enemies, which my team would have had trouble handling if it were not for Jessica. 
She holds the top lane by herself, and the stage is cleared rather quickly and easily. 912 is a goofy stage. I greatly underestimate the enemy's goofy Looney Tunes ass speed as they just sprint to the blue box with impunity. I of course failed the stage. This stage ends up being a non-stop slaughter as these enemies that are moving at a thousand percent run into the meek render that I set up, and I watch as my team keeps mowing down waves and waves of unfortunate victims. The end of the stage is a little scary with the three gargoyles that spawn, but luckily they're all mowed down by monster. 913 is a breeze and we run into our first semi-troublesome stage of 914. I tried twice to clear the stage without breaking the center pillar. I of course fail immediately both times, and decide that it'd be too much work to try and clear it that way. So on my third try, I just use Harmony to break the pillar. The rest of the stage goes rather smoothly, despite the gargoyles that spawn. Blaze, Chen, and Horn are on the left side, while Calcet holds the right side by herself. Things go pretty smoothly from there, and I just throw some extra bodies when I need some extra block for enemies. And we clear the stage. 915 is another easy breeze of a stage. I will complete my assignment. You didn't see that. 915 is another easy breeze of a stage. The evocators are quite dangerous, but luckily my units are able to just block and 1v1 them, so they end up not posing too much of a threat. A totally first try clear. 916 is similar to 915. It has a seemingly weird layout, but with only one blue box, it doesn't really matter in the end. The evocators in this stage pose the same challenge that they did last time, but with enough foreign bodies to throw at the problem, they get handled without too much trouble. The end of the stage gets a little worrying with Calcet's demise, but with enough sacrifice, I mean loyal soldiers, I'm able to block the last few evocators and take them down easy peasy. Another easy clear. 917 is a tricky stage since it puts two evocators a short pass and a lot of dog rushes. I struggle my way through the opening of the stage by recycling bodies due to my lack of any consistent healing. This is serviceable until the evocators start moving. I fail to notice a dog rush on the bottom lane and without DP, I am unable to deploy anyone that can block two and I leak, losing the run. On my second attempt, I place an early Jessica at the top of the lane to take down one evocator. This works out just leaving one more left. I use Reed to take down the last one, and the last few enemies are cleaned up by Omni and Blaze. 918 is a seemingly dangerous stage with hard ending enemies, but it turned out to be pretty simple. The opening is pretty easy since you can just assassinate all the casters one by one, and then the rest of the stage is a single lane for my entire team to just DPS down. First time clear. We have finally arrived at the boss stage. This stage has a lot of problems for my team. I lack any type of fast food deploy to destroy pillars, and many low altitude enemies also show up. There's also Mandragora herself. With my team lacking any real type of healing, it is hard to stall her out during her first phase. But those are future mochi problems for now, let's see how my first attempt went. My opening is immediately flubbed since Sally dies to the archers, causing me to have a lack of DP for the rest of the stage. I am barely able to deploy Amiya in time to block Mandragora, but without her skill, Amiya gets instantly lasered and fucking dies. Dies, which causes me to reset. On my second try, I don't let Sally instantly die, which lets me have enough TP to deploy everyone relatively comfortably. This time, Cal's lack of good healing and prioritization of monster leads oh, no. to Blaze dying on the right side of the stage, causing me to reset again. On my next attempt, I switch my setup by placing Blaze and Reed at the bottom together, and this solves my bottom lane issue. And I immediately throw, by panic placing Reed to bait Mandy thinking she wouldn't sit still for a little while. I then whiff the pillar push with Chen, and Manny gets to walk down for free, spelling the doom for my run. I lose with a leak on the left side, because low altitude hovering is very awesome. On the next attempt, we phase Manny a little late using a pillar, which is not good. However, since we used a pillar, we only have one left to knock Manny down during her phase 2. Because of this, she slips past due to her awesome low altitude hovering. However, we lose the stage again to enemies on the left side. This clues me in that Jessica is running out of her skill and is unable to take them all down. On our next attempt, we face Mandy early, but I get trigger happy and break the second pillar before she starts floating again. Despite that blunder, I still have faith that I'd be able to win the run in spite of my major throw. But reality is cruel. I get Mandy down to very little HP and watch as she starts wiping my entire team from existence. I keep fighting to the end and by lucky timing, Chen is back and able to deploy with all of my remaining DP. However, our heroic blue woman trades her life to take down Mandy as they kill each other. I must watch as one of the last gargoyles just walks through the rubble and into the blue box. On my winning attempt, I phase Mandy early without having to use a pillar. I don't repeat my mistakes by waiting for Mandy to start floating again before I push down the second pillar. A noble sacrifice from Chen and a monster cleanup leads to me killing Mandy with some amount of comfort. The next problem was the last few gargoyles that come at the end of the stage. I blocked the first gargoyle with Jessica's shield and let monsters true damage take care of it. I blocked the last two with horn and used the pillar to kill both of them while they're being blocked. 
The last gargoyle that's on the right side of the stage becomes my final worry. Once they phase it, I notice that Reed's S3 is doing minimal damage and she won't be able to kill it before it escapes her range. Luckily, I am saved by the OG Blue Woman's S2 that deals enough damage that Reed is actually able to take it down before it escapes her range. This earns me the mission accomplished screen and a challenge surprisingly done in only 2 hours. There it is, chapter 9 completed with the lore squad. This challenge would be way harder were it not for the altars that I included on their roster, specifically Jessica. It is very lucky that her altar sprite's first introduction was in chapter 9, since Jessica allowed me to deal with all the low altitude enemies. That fact alone probably allowed this to even be beatable in the first place, alongside the extra source of healing in Reed Ult. I was surprised at how quickly I managed to get through all the stages, considering in some events, one stage on its own could take me an hour or two to figure out. But with chapter 9 out of the way, it is time to look ahead to chapter 10 and its awesome mechanic of the artillery cannon. So if you want to see that, subscribe so you know when I stream my attempt or upload the video of it. If you made it this far into the video, then like the video too, it helps it out in the algorithm. Let me know what chapter you think will be the hardest to beat with the lore squad, and thank you for watching as always. Till next time.